pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Atlanta Falcons select Vic Beasley. Making the NFL is a very difficult thing to do, but keeping your spot in the league is even harder. You need to be very invested in your position, or else you will inevitably fade away into obscurity. A player may burst onto the scene very quickly, but if you do not develop the necessary skills, you can disappear just as fast. It can be very frustrating to see a player who has all the talent in the world and raw athleticism just throw it all away because of a lack of motivation. This is the story of what exactly happened to former NFL sack leader Vic Beasley. Vic Beasley's college career started out somewhat slow as he was a redshirt his freshman year for Clemson and did not play the entire 2010 season. As a redshirt freshman, Beasley played very sparingly as he only played in nine games and recorded one tackle. Beasley's redshirt sophomore season was a step in the right direction as he recorded eight sacks on 14 tackles. Beasley would go on to record significant snaps his junior year and start in all 13 games for Clemson, recording 41 tackles. 13 sacks and 4 forced fumbles. Beasley would be honored to the 2013 first team all ACC and become a 2013 consensus all American. Vic Beasley would have the option to declare for the 2014 NFL draft but was only projected to be drafted in the second round. Beasley decided to bet on himself and come back to Clemson for his senior year. His statistics regressed slightly compared to his junior year, but was a success nonetheless, as he would have 12 sacks on 33 tackles and 2 forced fumbles. Beasley would once again be first team All-ACC and an All-American, as well as a 2014 ACC Defensive Player of the Year. His draft stock would rise because of this and was a projected first round pick. He was viewed as an elite edge rusher in the 2015 draft. His athleticism and speed was a premier weapon in his arsenal. Beasley would have a very good combine and excited multiple draft experts. He was viewed as a player that can contribute to a team right away with plenty of upside. He would go on to be drafted in the first round, 8th overall by the Atlanta Falcons. Beasley would end up being Clemson's highest drafted defensive player since Gaines Adams in 2007. Vic Beasley's rookie season was not dominant by any means, but we did see a good sense of what was to come. Beasley got it all started in week 2 when he recorded his first sack against Eli Manning and the Giants. Beasley really showed us how good he could be in week 16 as he had a strip sack against Cam Newton to secure the victory and prevent the Panthers from having an undefeated season. He finished his rookie season with 4 sacks, 5 QB hits, 1 interception, 2 forced fumbles, and 26 tackles. <laughs> Back in his rookie year, Vic Beasley wasn't in the same time zone as the players that make this countdown. In 2016, Beasley busted out. And these so-called geniuses are eating crow now. He led the NFL with 15 and a half sacks. 2016 is when Beasley really broke out and became a dominant force in the NFL. The Falcons would move Beasley to the strong side linebacker position. This would show to be a very good decision. Beasley would break out for a league leading 15 and a half sacks, 6 forced fumbles, 16 QB hits and 39 tackles. Beasley would have a fantastic game in week 5 against the Denver Broncos as he had 8 tackles, 3 and a half sacks and 2 forced fumbles. 
In week 14 against the Rams, Beasley would register three sacks and a fumble return touchdown. Beasley would make his first and only Pro Bowl and become an All-Pro and even was ranked number 40 by his peers in the top 100 players of 2017. That year, Beasley helped lead the Atlanta Falcons to the playoffs. During the Falcons' Super Bowl run, Beasley would completely disappear. In three games, the only statistics Beasley would register was two tackles and two pass deflections. The only memorable play Beasley had in the playoffs was nearly intercepting Tom Brady in the end zone in overtime during the Super Bowl. The Falcons would end up blowing a 28-3 lead to New England. This would start the downfall of Beasley's career. Teams started to game plan around Beasley and shut him out of games entirely. This was more prevalent in 2017 as his only big play was in week 2 when he had a strip sack against Aaron Rodgers that was returned for a touchdown by Desmond Trufant. He would end up having a hamstring injury and only have 5 sacks on the season and one forced fumble. In 2018, the Falcons would exercise Beasley's 5th year option in hopes that Beasley would show his 2016 form once again. That would not be the case as his 2018 season was more of the same once again, only having 5 sacks and 1 fumble recovery for a touchdown. His 2019 season, which would end up being his last for the Falcons, he had somewhat of a bounce back season compared to the prior two. Beasley would have 8 sacks, 12 QB hits, and 2 forced fumbles. Beasley would sign a one-year $9.5 million contract with the Tennessee Titans. He would only play in five games and record three tackles and one forced fumble. The Titans would waive Beasley because of his ineffectiveness. Beasley would then sign a contract with the Raiders where he would become primarily a practice squad player. He would only have one tackle in five games with the Raiders. Vic Beasley rose to extreme heights in the NFL very fast, but fell off extremely quickly once teams knew how to plan around him. Beasley relied only on his athleticism and quickness and nothing else. He had no pass rush moves and no technique. He was a poor run defender and had little to no power. He essentially just ran at the quarterback and hoped for the best. Athleticism can only get you so far in the NFL. When you look at Beasley's sack totals compared to his QB hits, every single season he had nearly as many QB hits as sacks. This is simply not sustainable and showed that his 2016 season was a fluke as he had 15 and a half sacks and 16 quarterback hits. This is shown more when you realize Beasley had 6.5 sacks in a grand total of two games. It may very well be a lack of effort and stubbornness that contributed to Beasley's downfall. During the podcast, Bussin' with the Boys with Taylor Lawan and Will Compton, they shared stories about Vic Beasley. One story was Vic Beasley tried to get the Titans to boycott the season before ever even playing a snap for the team, yet alone even practice with them. Another story that Lawan shared was just before the game, Beasley was trapped in an elevator and got pissed off when they got him out because he wanted to just chill and collect with the Titans. Bro, Vic Beasley, what a fucking Nick, Nick, far wreck. Year, we Funny dude. Falcons, and that man broke in three quarters. I was like, oh, he is not. Bro, I remember my first day. Because remember, that was the year where I got signed. And my first day there was when this is when all the social justice stuff was going on. And, and, and teams were basically sitting out of practice and, and doing it. And like, you know, arm in arm, like, let's not practice today. And I remember sitting there and I didn't know who Vic was. Like, I knew Vic Beasley, but I didn't know that was him with like the massive fro and everything else. He chimes in from the back and says, like, I think we need to sit out the entire season. I remember players being like, yo, what the f 
is this dude talking about? Like, you you haven't even practiced. Like, at least get on the field and do something and gain some respect before anybody, like, listens to him chiming in and be like, we need to hold out and not play the entire season. Was that you that was sitting in the elevator with him before a game? They almost were, like, late to the game because the elevator broke? No, no. So there was somebody in there in the elevator with Vic Beasley before a game, and the elevator, like, shut down, and and then, like, an hour went by, and the elevator started back up, and he was pissed off, apparently. And he was like, man, I'm trying to CNC. This could be considered proof that Beasley may have never loved the game of football or fell out of love with it sometime during his career. Vic Beasley has recently re-emerged in the XFL with the Vegas Vipers. He would play in seven games starting only five of them. He would get half a sack and 15 total tackles. Whether he is serious about a possible return to football or he is just trying to chill and collect with the XFL remains to be seen. Beasley may or may not get another chance at being in the NFL as a backup or depth piece, but in my opinion, it is safe to say that that door is closed and Vic Beasley will never play another down in the National Football League. Either way you look at it, Beasley will go down as one of the biggest one-year wonders in NFL history.